In this Blender video, I'll show you a fluid trick that will allow you to make animations like this monkey made of cheese melting. I'll be using Blender version 2.92. Blender was updated with a new fluid simulator called MantaFlow in version 2.82, so what I'll be showing you won't work with versions older than that. The fluid trick that I want to show you is how to use the Boolean modifier along with the fluid simulator. There's actually two parts to this project. The first part is using the Boolean modifier to make the monkey disappear from top to bottom. The second part is using the Boolean modifier along with the fluid simulator to trace out the shape of the monkey for the fluid source. We'll start by adding a monkey. Since we're going to use the Boolean modifier with the monkey, we'll get better results if we add a remesh modifier to the monkey. But to give the remesh modifier a nice surface to work with, We'll first add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out. We'll set the viewport and render values in just a moment. Now add a remesh modifier and verify that voxel is selected. I'm going to use a voxel size of 0.02. Next, to make the monkey look smoother, increase the subdivision viewport value. I'm going to use 4. Then set the render value to match the viewport value. Now if I zoom in on the monkey, you can see that it's not smooth. If I right click and select Shade Smooth, you'll notice that it's still not smooth. So what I need to do is to apply these two modifiers. So apply the Subdivision Surface modifier first, and then the Remesh modifier. Now when I right click the monkey and select Shade Smooth, it will look smoother. Now add a Mesh Cube. We're going to set this up so that the monkey will disappear when the cube covers it, so the cube needs to be larger than the monkey. So press S, then 1.5, then Enter. Let's rename this cube, Cube Disappear. Next, we're going to animate the location of the cube. To do this, I'm going to press 1 on the number pad for front view, and then press Z and switch to wireframe view. The current position of the cube is where it will end up when it finishes moving, which will be at frame 70. So set the frame number to 70, and then press I and select Location to set a keyframe. Now we'll set its starting position, so set the frame number to 1. Then move the cube up by pressing G, and then Z, and drag it up above the monkey. Now press I and select Location. If I play it, you can watch how the cube moves. Now we'll use the Boolean modifier to make the monkey disappear when the cube moves over it. So select the monkey and add a Boolean modifier. Change the solver to fast. Since the monkey has a lot of vertices, it will work really slowly if fast is not selected. Next, make sure that the Boolean type is set to difference. Then for the object, select the cube that we added. Now when I play it, the monkey will disappear when the cube covers it. If you see any unexpected glitches, then try setting the overlap threshold to zero. You can try other values as well. If you can't fix it, then you can switch to the exact solver, but it will be a lot slower. Next, we're going to set up a short cube to trace out the shape of the monkey, which we'll use as our fluid source. So we need another monkey that we can trace. So press Shift-D to duplicate the monkey, and then right-click to place it in the same location as the original monkey. Then delete the Boolean modifier for this one. Since it will be used to shape our fluid source, I'm going to change the name from Suzanne to Suzanne Fluid. Now we need a short cube to trace out the shape of the monkey. So select the cube, press Shift-D to duplicate, and then right-click to place it in the same location. Because this cube will be our fluid source, I'm going to rename it Cube Fluid. Since the new cube is a copy of the original cube, it will already be animated to move along with the original cube. But we need to change its size, so tab into Edit Mode. We're going to change the size by only moving the top vertices. We don't want the bottom vertices to move because we need them to stay aligned with the bottom vertices of the other cube. So press 1 on the number pad for front view. Then select the top vertices. Now move them down by pressing G, then Z, 
Then drag them down until the height of the cube is about four small grid divisions. Then tab back into object mode. When I play the animation, the bottom of the two cubes should stay aligned. Now add a Boolean modifier to the new cube. As we did on the other one, set the solver to fast. Then set the Boolean type to intersect so that it will trace out the shape of the monkey as it moves down. Then for the object, select Suzanne Fluid. Now when I play the animation, you'll see that the shape of the monkey is traced out. And again, if you see any unexpected glitches, change the overlap threshold or switch to the exact solver. We don't want the monkey that we're tracing to be seen during the animation, so we're going to hide it. To do that, from the filter menu, select the icon that looks like a camera. Now we have buttons that we can use to control what's hidden. So hide Suzanne Fluid for rendering, and also click the button that looks like an eye to hide it in the viewport. Now when I play the animation, you'll see the shape of the monkey being traced out while it also disappears. We're about ready to add the fluid simulation, but first save your Blender project. We're doing this now because when we add the fluid simulation, Blender is going to add cache files. If we save the project first, then Blender will put the cache files in the same directory that we used to save the project. The reason that you'll want to know the location of the cache files is that they can be very large and you may want to delete them when you're done rendering your final animation. Now we're ready to add the fluid simulation. So with the small cube, which is named Cube Fluid, still selected, go to the object menu and select Quick Effects and then Quick Liquid. This new cube is the liquid domain and all the fluid that's generated will be contained within it. You can change its size, but don't make it larger than you need because larger domains require longer bake times and higher resolutions. I'll press N to open the sidebar so that you can see the size that I'm going to use. With the item selected, I'll set the X scale to 2.5 and the Y and Z scales to 2.0. I'm done with the sidebar, so I'll press N to close it. Now press 1 on the number pad to switch to front view. Then move it on the z-axis by pressing G and then Z, then drag it until the top of the cube is a little ways above the top of the monkey. Now select the Physics tab and let's set up some of the options for the liquid domain. We'll keep the default resolution for now, but we'll be changing it later. Make sure that Use Adaptive Time Steps is checked so that Blender will determine how many simulation steps to perform per frame. I'm going to set the minimum value to 2 so that Blender will always perform at least 2 simulation steps per frame. I'm also going to set the maximum value to 8, which will allow Blender to perform up to but not more than 8 simulation steps per frame. Increasing the minimum and maximum value should make the simulation more accurate. For the simulation method, Make sure that Flip is selected. We want the fluid to be thicker than water, so we're going to change its viscosity. In Blender 2.92, a new viscosity setting was added, but I wasn't able to use it to get the look that I wanted. So we're going to use the diffusion settings. The lower the exponent value, the thicker the fluid will be, so I'm going to set this value to 1. Next, add a check mark next to Mesh because we want the fluid to be a mesh. In the Cache section, I'm going to change the end value to 100. With these values, the fluid simulation will run from frame 1 to 100. I'm also going to set this value to 100 to make the animation end at frame 100. For the type, select All so that all the settings will be baked by using the single Bake All button. Next, select Cube Fluid, which is our fluid source, so that we can set some of the options for it. For the flow behavior, select Inflow because we want the fluid to flow into the liquid domain. Then make sure that Use Flow is checked. Now select the liquid domain, scroll down to the Cache section, and press the Bake All button. I'll speed up the video for this part. Now we can play it to see if it's basically what we want. It's looking good, so let's bake it at a higher resolution now. 
So click the Free All button to free the previous bake. Then I'm going to set the resolution divisions to 128. Larger values will produce higher fluid resolutions, but it will also require longer bake times and use more computer resources. Now I'll bake it again. I'm going to pause the video until it's done. Baking is done. Now I'll play it. Since I increased the fluid resolution, it's going to play slowly, and so I'll speed up the video for this part. This is looking good. When we render the animation, we don't want the two cubes to be visible, so let's hide them. I'll hide them for both rendering and the viewport. The liquid domain is only going to be hidden for the first part of the animation, so go to frame 1. Then click this button to hide it for the render. Then right click it and select Insert Keyframe. Now scrub through the timeline until you find the frame where the liquid domain cube switches from a cube to the fluid. When you're at the first fluid frame, click this button to unhide it. And then right click it and select Insert Keyframe. Now the liquid domain will be hidden until the first fluid appears. Next, let's make the cheese material. So select the monkey that we didn't hide. Switch to the Material tab and click the New button. The surface type should default to the principled BSDF shader. Set the base color to a hex value of FF8509. Then change the roughness value to 0.3. We also need to set the liquid domain to the same material. So select the liquid domain and change the material to the cheese material that we just made. For the background and to light the scene, we're going to use an HDR image from HDRI Haven. I'll put a link to it in the video description. After downloading it, select the World tab and click the small button next to Color. Then select Environment Texture. Click the Open button and select the HDR image. Since we're using this image to also light the scene, hide the light source for both the viewport and rendering. Now I'll press Z to switch to rendered view so that we can see the background. I'm going to set the strength of the background image to 2 to make it a little brighter. Now we'll add a shadow catcher under the cheese to prevent it from looking like it's floating. So add a plane and scale it up in size. Then press 1 on the number pad for front view and move the plane to the bottom of the fluid. There is currently no shadow, so switch to the Render tab and select Cycles for the Render Engine. We can see the shadow now, but we don't want the plane itself to be visible. So switch to the Object tab, open the Visibility section, and add a check mark next to Shadow Catcher. Now you can press 0 on the number pad for camera view and set up the view that you would like to use. This is the final rendered animation using the Cycles Render Engine with 32 render samples, and I also used denoising to clean up the noise. If you don't know how to use denoising, then you can watch my video on that topic. I'll put a link to it in the video description. For those that may not know how to render an animation, I'll put a link to a video for that as well. Being able to use the Boolean modifier along with the Fluid Simulator opens up a lot of possibilities. I hope that this video has inspired you to look for creative ways to use it. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.